My dear people of God, today we celebrate the feast of St. John the Evangelist. He and his brother James were the sons of Zebedee, and they were nicknamed by Jesus as the sons of thunder. John was involved in many of the central themes of Jesus' life, including the transfiguration, the crucifixion, and the discovery of Christ's resurrection. John the Evangelist is the name traditionally given to the author of the fourth gospel, i.e. the gospel of John. Christians have traditionally identified him with John the Apostle, John of Patmos, and John the Presbyter, although this has been disputed by some modern scholars. We are grateful to God for the life of St. John, who was an apostle and also wrote the Gospel of John, and is possibly the author of some of the other Johannine writings. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, on this feast of St. John the Evangelist, we would like to shift our attention from the Apostle John to Cardinal Peter Kujo Apia Texan, who is today celebrating his 75th birthday, his 30 years of being a bishop and 20 years of being a cardinal. I would like to thank the organizers of this Thanksgiving Mass for the honor done me by asking me to be the homilist on this occasion. I suspect that the reason for my being invited to be the homilist is that I happen to be the Cardinal's classmate in the seminary. And I know more about him than most people. As we gather here today to celebrate these three momentous events, I would like you all to join me in wishing the Cardinal a happy and a blessed 75th birthday, 30 years of episcopacy, and 20 years of cardinalage. <laughs> the question may be asked, who is this Cardinal Peter Kojuapia Jackson, for whose sake we are all gathered here today? Cardinal Peter Kojuapia Jackson was born on 11th October 1948 in, in Insuta, Wasa, a mining town in the western region of Ghana, to a Methodist mother and a Roman Catholic father. His mother later converted to Catholicism. She sold vegetables in the open market, while his father worked as a carpenter in the manganese mines in Insuta, Wasa. Cardinal Texan is the fourth of ten children. His primary school education was at the Roman Catholic Primary School in Sita Wasal, while his middle school education was at the Urban Council Middle School in Sita Wasal. His secondary school education was at the St. Teresa's Minor Seminary in Misano as a seminarian for the priesthood for the Archdiocese of Cape Coast. He entered the Minor Seminary in September 1962, the same year that I also entered Emisano, and so became classmates. He came there from the preparatory seminary in Salpond, while seminarians like Matt, with uh, Martin Silfi and others from the Cape Coast Archdiocese. At that time, the seminary had some distinguished formators and teachers. The rector was one Father Vandela, who was called Kofi. He taught Greek and many other subjects. He is the brainiest person that I've ever come across. So he could teach just about any subject. Then there was Father Menya, nicknamed Kokshege, who taught English and Father Louis, nicknamed Muzumuzu, who was the spiritual director, both from the Archdiocese of Cape Coast. Another priest was Father Platford, 
who taught history and whose name was Attila and who later led the priesthood. There was also Father Deroy, who was called Super Caesar for his exceptional mastery of Latin. He was also called Aswar because, it, because of his big protruding ears. <laughs> then also there was Father Begafoot, who was called Checker, because he would check, check on the students most of the time. He taught physics, mathematics and additional mathematics. I was in charge of the science laboratory. There was also Father De Vries, whose nickname was Kwame Jiriman. I do not know how he came by that name. He taught English and geography and was in charge of health in the seminary. Then there was Father Kainhurst, who taught Latin, French and Gregorian music. He enjoyed riding a motorbike to the accompaniment of singing and could be heard singing from at least 50 yards away. Some other priests were to come later, including Monsignor Gabriel Dazimensa, who was appointed the rector of the seminary in 1966. Nice nickname was Opian. <laughs> he taught geography. Then there was Father Bless, who was called the Magister Spiritus. At that time, you know, we were baffled by that. We didn't know what it meant. But he gave the impression that he was somebody very important. Magister Spiritus. And who supervised the construction of the so-called Appian Way, the road that went from the residence of the priest to the classroom block, about 100 yards away. Peter Texan was instrumental in the construction of the Appian Way. <coughs> now, it's love of the. Yeah, one moment. Then also there was Father Zelstra, who taught physics and was named Abutre because he did not have the gift of patience. <laughs> then there was Father Vandenberg, who taught biology and was called Z. Instead of the British Z, he would pronounce the American Z. So that became his name. He had obtained a master's from Fordham University in the US. There was also Father Harry Huben, who had a doctorate in history from Fordham. Now his nickname was, I know, because he claimed to know everything about history. These were some of the priests who taught and formed Cardinal Texan in Emisano. He did his ordinary level studies in Emisano from 1962 to 1967. The subjects he studied included, included English literature, French, Latin, Greek, general knowledge, mathematics, and additional mathematics. In his advanced level studies, from 1967-1969, he did Latin, geography, and English literature, plus general paper. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there are a few things that I must mention as far as Cardinal Texan's formation in the Missano was concerned. So academically, he was brilliant and had great passion for the sciences. He had a great desire to do physics mathematics and chemistry, so having done general science mathematics and additional mathematics in Emisano. Now if he had not, if he had the chance to pursue the sciences at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, or Harvard in the U.S., which was his wish, I'm sure that would have been a serious threat to the reputation of people like Einstein. Now, his love of the sciences, he took the name Archimedes. Now, Archimedes of Syracuse was an ancient Greek mathematician, physicist, engineer, and astronomer. Later, Peter Texan shortened the name Archimedes to Archie. Some of you may have known that at one stage he was called Peter Archie Texan. So, that's the origin of that Archie. 
He was also a great footballer, indeed a great midfielder. And if he had taken football as his profession, he would have put many of the current Black Stars defenders and midfielders to shame. He distinguished himself on one occasion when our class, in our first year at the St. Peter's Regional Seminary in Peju in 1969, challenged the rest of the seminary to a game of football. Our class had exactly 11 players, and we faced the full mind of the rest of the seminary. It was a 0-0 drawn game. Peter Texan played a great role in this, while our goalkeeper, Martin De Silvi, <laughs> Martin De Silvi ensured that the ball did not enter his net. At that time, Martin was very slim, lanky, and agile. <laughs> and was a very good goalkeeper. Matt, are you here somewhere? Yes. Matt, let's see, where are you? There he is. Not so lanky anymore. <laughs> Peter Texan was, was also a musician. He knew how to play the guitar and to, accompli and to accompany it with songs. He found an ally in one Charles Gabriel Palmer Bucker who came to lower six when Peter Texan and I were in upper six. Charlie Buckley was a great singer, and when the two of them came together, it was a great time in the seminary. On many an evening, they would perform, and the lesser mortals like me and other members of the seminary, who could neither sing nor play the guitar, danced with the music that they were playing. I am sure that if the two of them had chosen at the path of forming a band, they would have challenged Bob Marley and the Whalers <laughs> and other famous musicians. There is one story that I must tell about our time in Emisano. One day, Texan, a Sufi and I decided that we had done our fair share of studying in the classroom and that it was time to go to the orchard and pick a few oranges to eat. Now that was forbidden by the rules of the seminary. But as you know, boys are boys. And in any case, we thought that we could do it stealthily and quickly and be back in the classroom without any staff member seeing us. We came across a huge orange tree with plenty of ripe oranges on top of the tree. We decided to attack it from different sides with stones. After a minute or two, a big stone landed on my head. <laughs> and I started bleeding. So obviously, I did not uh, throw the stone on my head, so it must have been thrown by either Texan or a selfie. So I started bleeding profusely, and there was the need for me to go and see the priest who was in charge of hell in the seminary, namely Father De Vries. What was I going to say to him? Was I going to say that it was either Martin De Silvi or Peter Texan who threw the stone? Were the three of us not going to be dismissed from the seminary for disobeying the rule in the seminary? As soon as I arrived, Father De Vries asked me, Joseph, what happened to your head? I did not want to lie. Neither did I want to give anything away. So I simply said, I was in the orchard and the stone landed on my head. <laughs> Luckily for me, he did not put any more questions and started treating the bleeding head. So he took me to a clinic in Elmina, where the head was stitched. To this day, I do not know whether it was Martin De Silvi <laughs> or Peter Texan who threw the stone. <laughs> my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, after this Mass, you have my permission to put this question to them. <laughs> who threw the stone? Yes. However, if either of them wants to come to me and confess 
I will keep the whole matter secret. I will give a very lenient penance, which will be the recitation of 5,000 Hail Marys to be done within 48 hours. Are you there, Peter? Martin, are you there? So after this, I know Peter Texan went to the St. Peter's Regional Seminary, where he did an integrated course of philosophy and theology from 1969 to 1971, before going on to do theology at St. Anselm on Hudson Conventual Franciscan Seminary in Rensselaer, New York, where he graduated as a Master of Divinity and a Master of Theology. So he returned to his Archdiocese of Cape Coast in 1975 to be ordained a priest by our Bishop John J. Misa of blessed memory at the St. Francis de Sales Cathedral in Cape Coast. Actually, it was here, but it should have been the cathedral in 19... No, no, he was ordained there in 1975. Now let's look at his a priestly ministry. So in his priestly ministry, Father Texan taught geography, religious studies at the St. Teresa's Minor Seminary in Emisano. From September 1976 to 1980, Father Texan did licentiate studies in sacred scriptures at the Pontifical Biblical Institute in Rome and Jerusalem. This required the learning of Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, in addition to modern languages like German and French. From 1980 to 1981, he taught sixth form religious studies in the minor seminary in Emisano. From 1981 to 1987, he taught sacred scriptures at the St. Peter's Regional Seminary, Pedro. He also taught biblical, biblical studies at the Department of Religious Studies at the University of Cape Coast on a part time basis. From 1983 to 1985, he taught part time as a visiting lecturer at the Grand Seminaire de la Côte d'Ivoire at Anyama. From 1984-1986, Father Texan was the priest in charge of the St. John the Baptist Catholic Community at Pedro and a chaplain for the Catholic Community at the University of Cape Coast. During the period 1987-1992, he worked in Rome in a doctorate degree in the Old Testament. The conclusion of his studies and the defense of his thesis were taken away by his nomination by Pope John Paul II on 6 October 1992 as the Archbishop of Cape Coast to replace Archbishop John J. Misa, who had died on 22nd September 1991. Now let's look at uh, uh, the Cardinal Lasset, a bishop or Archbishop in Cape Coast. Father Peter Texney was ordained a bishop and installed Archbishop of Cape Coast at the Cathedral of St. Francis in Cape Coast on 27th March 1993 by Archbishop Dominico Joe Ando, Principal Consecrator, Archbishop Peter Perico Derry, and Bishop Peter Kwasi Sabon as co consecrators. In 1997, he was elected as the President of the Ghana Kali Bishops Conference at the Plenary Assembly of the Conference held in Ho. Around the same time, the Vatican also appointed him as a member of the Joint International Commission for Dialogue between the World Methodist Council and the Catholic Church. He served on this commission from 1997 to 2005. He has also been a member of the Pontifical Council for Christian Unity and the Pontifical Commission for the Cultural Patrimony of, of the Church from 2002 to the present. He was a member of the Governing Council of the University of Ghana, Legon, from 2001 to 2006. He was instrumental in the establishment of the Catholic University College in 2003 at Fiapre, Sunyai, and serves to date as its chancellor. He was also instrumental in starting the quality insurance company. Our Bishop Texan, created and coordinated diverse charitable and social service activities in the Archdiocese of Cape Coast. The establishment of the Hospital Abu Dumburan, 
the Liberian refugee camp. Then a maternity and fistula repair, repair hospital in Makesin. An addition treatment center at Brafriyal, Cape Coast. Summer schools to upgrade the learning experience of students in the less endowed and rural secondary schools and lay theology formation for catechists. Now let's look at the cardinal as a cardinal. Pope St. John Paul II created and proclaimed Archbishop Peter Texan, cardinal priest of St. Liborio in Italy in his last consistory of 21st October 2003. Cardinal Texan was the vice president of the Association of Episcopal Conferences of Ang Anglophone West Africa, Ekawa, from 2004 to 2007 and later became the president of RECOA, the Regional Episcopal Conference of West Africa. He was appointed by President Ajikun Kufo to be the chairman of the first National Peace Council, and he served on it from 2006 to 2010. He led the joint delegation of the Christian Council of Ghana and the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference to negotiate a peaceful outcome of the 2010 eight elections. The Cardinal has attended various synods in the Vatican and Pope Benedict entrusted him with a number of fully sea missions aimed at bringing peace to various parts of the world. This included visits to the Ivory Coast and Sudan. Then honors and awards. Throughout his years as an Archbishop and as a Cardinal, Cardinal Texan has received numerous honors and awards including honorary doctorates from distinguished universities in Ghana, the United States, and many other countries. And the decorations he has received include the Order of the Star, National Honor of the Republic of Ghana, the Order of the Rock, from the Anumabu traditional area in central Ghana, an honorary citizen of the city of Victoriosa in Malta. Cardinal Texan is a member of the European Academy of Arts and Sciences, Philosophy and Religion Division, as well as of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. His addresses and speeches at various universities and world and national events are numerous, too many to be mentioned here. He has also published several articles and book chapters. By a strange twist of fate, the person who sacrificed the pursuit of the sciences on the altar of the Catholic priesthood is now the Chancellor of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences and the Pontifical Academy of the Social Sciences. Let's love for him. So he was appointed to this position on 4th April 2022. Cardinal Texan has a great sense of hospitality. So if a bishop from Ghana happens to be in Rome for one or the other meeting, he only has to give the cardinal a call and he will invite him to his flat for a meal or take him to a restaurant. I've personally benefited from this many times. During the last preliminary visit to Rome, the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference, we had the pleasure privilege and honor of being, being hosted by the Cardinal for a very sumptuous lunch in the Pontifical Academy of Science. The lunch consisted of at least some five courses. Or maybe more. So as we celebrate, we celebrate these achievements for illustrious Cardinal, what can we do but to give thanks to the Lord for his life and achievements? In giving thanks, we'll be doing something biblical. In the Old Testament, when God did something for his people, the Jews, they usually rendered thanks to him. Indeed, God expected them to render thanks, and if they did not do so, God would get angry. It is important uh, to give thanks to God for all that he does for us. So in the words of the prophet Isaiah, each one of us can say, I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord, the praise of the Lord according to 
all that the Lord has granted us, and the great goodness to the house of Israel, which he has granted them according to his mercy, according to his, the abundance of his steadfast love. In a like manner, the psalmist can say in Psalm 116, verses 12 to 14, What shall I return to the Lord for his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will repay my vow to the Lord in the presence of his people. Inspired by these words of scripture, we are today lifting up the cup of salvation and calling upon the name of the Lord as we celebrate this Mass of Thanksgiving. The theme of Thanksgiving is also found in the Gospel of Luke, with the sorrow of the ten lepers who were cured miraculously of their leprosy by Christ. However, we are told that only one returned to Jesus to say thank you. In their joy, the nine forgot to return to Jesus to say thank you. Even though they had faith in Jesus' power to heal, they had no gratitude. We do not want to be like the nine lepers who did not thank Jesus for the favor he had done them. Like the Samaritan leper, we shall give thanks to God on this great day for the life of Cardinal Texan. As we celebrate these anniversaries, we'd like to say thank you, first of all, to God who has made this day possible. It was God who 75 years ago gave life to our celebrant. We'd also like to give thanks to the Cardinal's parents through whom God brought him into this world. May they continue to rest in the peace of Christ in God's kingdom. We'd also like to give thanks to the extended family that also played a great part in, in bringing him up. Our thanks also go to his own parish of Nsita Wasa, in which he was born and nurtured, to all the people in the parish with whom he interacted, to the priests, catechists, and other pastoral agents, and lay people who contributed to his spiritual life. Our gratitude also goes to the teachers who taught him in Nsuta and his formators in the minor and major seminaries, as well as in Rome and Jerusalem. Our gratitude also goes to the parishes and institutions in which he worked as a priest before becoming a bishop. My dear Cardinal Peter Texan, Psalm 90 verse 10 tells us, The days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80, if we are strong. Even then, their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Now that you are 75, you have attained the sum of your years, plus five more. Everything from now on is bonus. You must have realized that you are on the home run. Like an athlete taking part in the competition, you will be racing towards the finishing line. In the twilight of your life now, it is only a matter of time before you and all the others who are 75 and above will depart to be with the Lord. If this is the case, then it is time for you and the rest of us to put our spiritual houses in order as we await the time of the end. It is our hope and prayer that you will be strong to attain the bonus of five more years so that you will be at least 80 years before you depart for the other side of eternity. Indeed, it is my hope that the good Lord will double your 75 years so that you will attain the ripe old age of 150 years before you sleep in Christ. We would like to wish you more years as a bishop and as a cardinal. We pray for our Pope, Pope Francis, but if he should resign or be called by God to himself, we will start a vigorous campaign for our own Peter Pedropia Texan to be elected the next Pope. <laughs> by being 75 years old, Cardinal Texan is a member of the Episcopal Septuagenarian Fraternity of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference. Now, 
by virtue of the power vested in me as a senior member of the fraternity, being some eight months older than the cardinal, and as a classmate, I entreat you all, my dear people of God, to stand and join me in singing happy birthday to the young man of 75 years old. Please, let's stand. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. How old are you now? 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 Samri or Sankamika Fantikakra, 